Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be making these super cute triangle jelly pouches. These are going to be really cute to hang on the back of a backpack or just to give a treat in, just to keep a little knickknacks in. You can see I've got my Wonder Clips in one. I've got some other embellishments in the other ones. I think it's really cute. It's a really fun twist on the pyramid pouches. I do have the pyramid pouch with fabric with the fully lined version um, linked in the description below the video. That's a video I did just a couple weeks ago, but I thought this was a fun twist on them. You could also use faux leather on this and it would be super cute or any other kind of different fabrics other than just a plain quilting cotton. So I hope you guys enjoy this take on them and let's get started. Okay, so this is what we're making. This one I have zipping from the top down. This one I did from the bottom up. I like this style better, so I think I'm gonna stick with this. This one I put a lobster clasp on. This one I just left a ring in case you wanted to hook that onto something else, a keychain or something like that. I'm using six inch zippers, six inch squares, and I've just cut these down to exactly six inches. I'm going to run these over to my sewing machine and stitch across both of the ends before I get started just to make sure that my zipper pulls don't come off. These are just some random scraps out of my scrap bin. And then again, the swivel lobster clips clasp are optional. Now, if your vinyl is at all wrinkly or I'm using scraps, so these are kind of messed up a little bit, you just wanna iron your surface, get your iron nice and hot, add a little steam, and then place the plastic on your surface and you'll see those wrinkles come right out and it also makes this really pliable. So it's gonna help you with turning your bag also. You can also just hit it with a blow dryer or a heat gun. If you use a heat gun, be very careful because it will melt, so you wanna keep your distance. But just the heat will take the wrinkles out and it also makes it much more pliable. So that's gonna help us turn it right side out. So I'm gonna stitch my zippers closed and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my zippers closed so that my pulls don't come off. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take one of my squares and my zipper, I'm gonna put it pull side down and line it up right along that edge and I highly recommend that you use clips. Even though this is a short little distance, this is very slippery and it tends to be, when the presser foot goes over it, it tends to want to slide out of the way. If you have a Teflon presser foot, great time to use it. If you don't, you can put a piece of tape sticky side up on the bottom of your presser foot and that will help it not stick. I'm sewing on the fabric side, so this is going to be against my machine. It slides through my machine, but if you're having a problem with that, you can take a piece of paper and keep that along the uh, plate of your machine and just run your uh, vinyl over it like this so that the vinyl's not sticking to the top of your machine. All right, so go ahead and stitch that zipper down. Okay, so I have sewn my zipper down on one side. You're going to lift it up, and then you're gonna turn this over and you're going to push the vinyl down so that the zipper's laying flat. Then you can turn it back over and sort of finger press it, and then run a top stitch right along the top that's gonna to catch that zipper and that fold of the vinyl and that will keep that up out of your way. I've secured that with the top stitch. Now you're gonna do the exact same thing to this side. You're gonna put your zipper pull side down on the other side. You're gonna stitch across there. Once it's stitched, you're gonna open it up, finger press it, and then run a top stitch on this side as well. So go ahead and do those two stitches and meet me back here. All right, so I've got my top stitch down on both sides, if you can see, and my zipper going down the middle. The next thing we're going to do is take one of our tabs, whatever color you want to use, and you're going to place it, so you're going to fold one in half. I made this one about an inch wide. I just eyeballed these. I didn't, there's nothing magical about this size, but I'm making the little tab for right here. So you're gonna take it on the end opposite of the pole and you're going to put it so that the folds are facing you and the, the inside is facing the inside of the pouch. And you're just going to stitch that over your zipper and back stitch a couple of times. Okay, so 
It looks something like this. So you're going to fold this in half and meet up those edges on the end. And now I'm going to take one of my smaller scrap pieces and this one measures about a half an inch. I'm going to fold that in half. I'm going to put a lobster clasp through it. And then fold it in half. And I'm going to tuck that right inside this top end. This is the end that the zipper pull would be if the zipper was closed. So I'm going to tuck that in about one inch down. Give myself plenty of clearance. I'm going to stick that into place. Now you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch here and down here. We're leaving this bottom part open. So just where I have the clips, we're going to be stitching. And when you go over this zipper, you want to back stitch two or three times just to make sure that you've got a nice stop in there. So you're going to sew there and down here. Back stitch is the beginning and the end. All right, so it's looking like this. This is the end where if the zipper is closed, let me close it so that you can orient yourself. So if the zipper was closed, I've sewn this end and this end, and I backstitched several times as I went across that zipper. All right, so now we're going to open up our zipper, and we're going to take the pouch, and we're going to collapse it this way. We're going to match this zipper with this bottom seam. Just like that. It should match up perfectly. And you can open up that seam. You want to make sure your zipper is open. And again, if it gets too hard to mess with, heat your iron up, heat your surface, lay it down. I'm just laying it down so that I can get that seam open. And it's going to lay nicely for me right there. Clip that into place, and now you're just going to stitch across that end. All right, so it should be looking like this. We're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut off any threads and our corner, making sure we don't cut into that seam allowance. Just cutting off any excess PVC. Careful trimming down this zipper area. All right, so now it's time to turn this right side out. Now, again, this can be a little bit cumbersome, but if you use the heat of your iron or the heat of a blow dryer, you're going to find that this gets much softer and easier to turn. So what I recommend is reaching in and opening up that zipper all the way and then start turning it. And it doesn't want to do this, so you have to coax it a little bit. And then use that iron, put some steam in your surface, lay it down, and now it's instantly soft and look, I can just pop it right out into place. And there you have it. Aren't these cute? I think the kids are going to love these. They're going to be really cute hanging on a backpack or just to put some, you know, your chapstick in or even for Halloween, make some of these, like the purple ones, and put your candy in it and make little treats for the kids. So a lot of fun. I'm going to make one more, and then I will get this video uploaded so that you can start making some jelly triangle pouches yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are inspired to make some jelly triangle pouches, please tag me on social media. I would love to see your version. Also, don't forget, you can use uh, faux leather, real leather, all kinds of different mediums to make these, and they're all going to be very unique. I would love to see what you guys come up with. You could also use some vinyl and personalize these. So a lot of options. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to click that bell notification so that you're notified every time there is a new video. As always, never stop making. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.